Hi everyone, Jewish Roots in the Golan, the Moshev Band in the Moshev. Lema Davar Domes, Special Theater, teaches the ideas of the Torah. And New Horizons, training new leaders, Israeli Salad. Let's get started. Shalom and welcome to Israeli Salad. Prime Minister Olmert is ready to give up more parts of the land of Israel. Under our news editions, you will hear the political and strategical reactions to this statement. On Israeli Salad, we will relate to the historical and traditional connection to our land. Today, we're off to the beautiful Golan Heights. Mark Kaplan, a resident of the Golan Heights, reports. In the past, we've spoken a lot about the strategic importance of the Golan Heights. But the Golan is not only strategically important, but it also has historical significance for the Jewish people dating back thousands of years. The remains of the city of Gamla stand as a testimony to Jewish life here in the Golan 2,000 years ago. This city was a flourishing Jewish community uh, in the time of the Romans. Many synagogues from this time period have been found all over Israel, and around 25 are here in the Golan. Around a quarter of the synagogues from this time period are found in the Golan. The community was homogeneous. We can see that the remaining structures reflect the rich social life of the community, and Jerusalem was central to the community. 2,000 years ago, this was a flourishing Jewish community. Uh, there were homes with private mikvahs, there were olive presses, and it was not just a remote town that nobody ever heard about. For instance, I'm actually standing inside a ritual bath, a mikveh. This one belongs to the synagogue. It's a public bath connected to the synagogue in Gamla. But here there aren't only communal ritual baths, but also private ones that are found in wealthy people's homes or next to olive presses. The point being that because there were so many mikvahs in such a small area, this tells us that the people of Gamla took great care to observe the laws of ritual purity. Fulfilling the laws of ritual purity was central to life in Gamla during this period. This is the synagogue in Gamla from the period of the Second Temple. It's one of the earliest synagogues that we know of that actually stood during the time of the Second Temple. One of the supporting columns we see here is shaped like a heart, viewed from above. If you would look at it from the front, it would look like two columns joined together. Actually, the direction of the synagogue was not in the direction of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is actually in this direction. The synagogue actually faces to the northeast. So the question is, why is the synagogue not directed towards Jerusalem? The answer is very clear. We know that this building existed when the temple stood. And when the temple was standing, they didn't feel the need to direct the synagogue towards Jerusalem. More than anything else, Gamla perhaps expresses the Jewish courage to make a determined stand, the struggle of the few against the many. This was a strong army that didn't lose once except for its final battle that took place here. They were determined, organized, and they drastically diminished their daily needs from their very high standard of living they enjoyed. They even prepared a special coin. We found a number of bronze coins that on the one side had the words redemption and on the other side was written Holy Jerusalem. In this way they were saying that practically they were fighting for their own city. But in essence, they were fighting for the Holy Jerusalem. They were saying, we are on the front line to protect Jerusalem and the temple from the enemy. 
אבל בראש מעייננו זה ירושלים הקדושה. ואנחנו החזית הקדמית שתעצור את האויב לפלוש אל ירושלים, אל בית המקדש. היסטוריאנים מסתכלים על קומפריסים בין גמלה ומסאדה. השונים לחלוטין, כאן אנשים באו לחיות. היו חיים מאוד... יש שתי סרפות סטוריות, כמעט אחרות. Here people came to live. They had very full, very good lives, whereas Masada was a place of defense where they understood that this was the last stand for the Jews. It was a place for final Jewish resistance, which is a story in itself. The ruins pay tribute to the courage and determination of the Jews against the Roman invaders. And this tower stands as a testimony to that courage. לקעקע, למעשה לנתק מספר אבנים שהם אבני היסוד של המגדל שמתמוטט ו... קובר תחתיו את הזקיפים היהודים. The Romans succeeded in loosening several stones which were the foundation stones of the tower so that it subsequently collapsed on the Jewish guards. This signaled the beginning of the fall of the city and a great panic that engulfed the Jews who grabbed whatever possessions they could and their children and ran to the peak of the hill up above. The Romans breached the wall and entered into the city. From first-hand accounts we found nails in archaeological excavations, spearheads which belonged either to the Jewish defenders or to the Roman attackers climbing the ladders over the city walls. This is one of the spots where on the eve of the rebellion we find Jews were encamped within, blocked off any holes and reinforced the walls in a significant way as a part of the defense operation to oppose the Roman invaders. The Gamal Reserve has the largest population of mountain eagles and vultures in Israel. People come from all over the world to see the birds fly gracefully over the canyon. However, few people are aware that not far away is a memorial to the residents of the Golan who fell defending Israel or in terror attacks. For me, this is a memorial site both for those who fell in ancient times 1900 years ago and the soldiers who fell here during the War of Independence. This is the place where every year on Memorial Day all the residents of the Golan gather together. Memorial Day ceremonies are held here in a manner that is incomparable with anywhere else in the country. Reporting for the Golan, this is Mark Kaplan for Israeli Salad. On a previous program, we met the Moshev band. Now, as they have come again to visit Israel, we met them at the Moshev, Moshev Modi'im. We grew up playing music from, uh, from the age of nothing. As far back as I can remember, we started playing music, and then at a certain point, we started playing in Jerusalem. For uh, the students that were here overseas, and um, a lot of American students who were here studying got into our music. And um, we just sort of became Moshav, the Moshav band, because we were those guys from the Moshav. And that's how the name kind of stuck. Truth I can't deny. I hear a cold, cold cry calling through the night. Moshav is a, a village-type uh, dwelling outside the city, more in the nature. As you can see, we're in a Moshav. Uh, we're actually on actually the Moshav. On a Moshav. On the Moshav. Walks the thin road with decision still untold. The visions in his mind that won't help them to unfold scars of honor high. We've been writing our own, our own original stuff for, for years now, and uh, it's kind of, uh, we like to call it uh, ethnic rock or Middle Eastern rock music. Yeah. Middle Eastern. 
because it's it's rock. It's very energetic music, but it's got a lot of the influences we grew up with, which you know, everything kind of from Neil Young to uh, you know, the, the, the guy riding his camel to work. I see her in your eyes, the truth I can't deny. I hear her cold, cold cry. We see all all different types of people at our concerts. It's definitely uh, it's been you know we're Jewish, we're Israeli, so I think we've attracted a lot of Jewish people and Israelis. But we see lots of different people, and a lot of times I think it's actually the people. Sometimes it's the people who aren't Jewish or Israeli who have never been exposed to this type of music that are actually the most, the most uh, interested in what we're doing. Try to, you know, we try as much as possible to have conscious lyrics, spirituality, you know, stuff that anyone would be able to, love songs, you know, anything that people could relate to. Personal, our personal story, you know. Anything that's true, you know, I think that's really, it's anything that's good, but truth, the kind of, I think, when you, when you're, when you write a song that's true, if it's good, I'll say that that's the best kind of song. And then it'll come across that way. Thank you very much. <laughs> we'll end today's program with a song by the Moshav. Please send your comments, ideas, and questions to the Israeli Salad email, yoni at israelnn.com. Or leave a message on the Israeli Salad voicemail at international dialing code 972-3-918-5554. That's 972-3-918-5554. A demonstration of solidarity with Israel's kidnapped soldiers, especially with the three soldiers kidnapped this past summer, Eldad Regev, Ehud Goldwasser, and Gilad Shalit, took place in Brussels, Belgium. Around 5,000 Jews from all over Europe attended. The rally, co-sponsored by the Jewish Agency, was intended to pressure the European states to act towards the release of the kidnapped soldiers. Here are some pictures we received from this event. Please remember to add the names of our soldiers to your prayers, Ehud ben Malka, Eldad ben Tova, and Gilad ben Aviva. Roni and Roy were two non-observant Tel Avivians who were involved in theater and drama. Since the two met Rabbi Eitan from the Rosh Yehudi organization, they have continued to be involved in the same field, but with much more content and depth. Gabi Newman met them in Tel Aviv. What's the connection between this awkward theatrical scene in the Tel Aviv Bugrushov Street and the character of a righteous ancestor, Avraham Avinu. 
to understand this, let's first meet the actors, Roi, Roni, and Rabbi Eitan. The three tell us about the meeting that brought about the establishment of the Jewish theater, called Le Mahadavar Dome, or To What Does It Resemble? It all started when the wives of Roni and Rabbi Eitan were with their kids at a local park. And then Tamar, Eitan's wife, invited us to join them for a Shabbat meal. It was the first time I met Eitan. Also, he came to this meal. In the meeting, our meeting with Rabbi Eitan uh, provided us with the uh, outstanding um, opportunity to try and understand the, uh, the Holy Bible uh, traditions, Parashat uh, Shavua, in a way we couldn't, uh, we couldn't ever uh, even dream of getting it uh, with, this, with the way the, uh, the secular system of educating works. Uh, myself, as a, as a secular high school student, I remember uh, the teachers would usually treat the Bible as uh, in, a, in a very informative way, as uh, something, uh, all kinds of uh, statistics and uh, data you have to memorize for a test. Um, and through our uh, conversations and uh, limud with Rabbi Eitan, we actually understood that uh, there are so many deeper uh, meanings and ways of understanding the, the stories that are relevant, are relevant to everyday life. And then at this first Shabbat meal we found out that we all are involved in drama and theater. And that's when the idea of the theater was born. Well, theater, first of all, it's entertainment, and I think entertainment is the best way to uh, communicate any message, uh, good or bad. And uh, once once you make your audience laugh, once you make them uh, uh, once you make them cry, once you make them uh, um, really think about what they see, if this, if your scenes are good enough. Um, I personally hope that if someone watches our show, it encourages him to look at those uh, stories in a different way. For example, this play shows a protester demonstrating in the streets of Tel Aviv about social issues. The audience is surprised to discover that he is here not for his own personal interests. Listen to me, the police punctured my bicycle. I don't understand, you're protesting against the price of fuel? You don't have a car. I don't have a car, I'm protesting out of principle. The scene with the demonstrator was written when we learned about Avram Avinu's actions in Parshat Vayera. We were asking ourselves, how does Avraham have all the emotional strength and mercy when he prays for the sinners of Sodom that they shouldn't be killed by God when he's commanded by God to sacrifice Yitzchak? He doesn't even think about himself and he doesn't go against God's commandments. This combination with drama helps us understand why things are written as they are written. When we sit and learn, we try to do so like they did in the time of the Midrash. And we look at that deep and fundamental idea and try to think of a story that could explain the idea better. Once you go deeper, once you, once you try to leap over the, uh, that uh, non-friendly interface, you can really understand that almost every story, even those, uh, those, uh, those Parashat HaShavua that are uh, involved with uh, rules and uh, like uh, dry statistics, are very, very relevant. You can find the way it is relevant to your everyday life. Through their performances, Roy and Roni not only convey the messages of the Torah to their audience, it's also something that brings them closer to Judaism. The meeting with Eitan and what we're doing changed the way I look at religion. I'm wearing a kippah on my head. I haven't become observant, but I've come closer. My way of thinking changed. I started going to the synagogue on weekends. It changed stigmas I had. I thought that the observant could never ponder and ask difficult questions and try to understand. After meeting Eitan, I understood that things are different. 
From the time we started our uh, mutual work together, I found myself uh, many times visiting a synagogue, um, opening the Bible for my own enjoyment, um, ask, actually asking questions, actually uh, decreasing my judgment of people, trying uh, to show a real interest towards tradition and uh, habits I really did not understand or had very deep antagonism towards. A leadership crisis. This is something that is felt in Israel as the nation is seeking leaders that resemble, or at least strive to resemble, our historical leaders. New Horizons is an organization with one main goal, training real future leaders. Tired of the lack of quality leadership in Israel? Perhaps rather than focus on who is to blame, there may be a need to just develop better leaders. National Union, National Religious Party Knesset member Effie Atom is one of the organizers behind a new program to harvest these new leaders. Uh, no doubt that our political system has got to be changed in order to, uh, uh, to, have, to, to give a better representation for the different uh, ideas, different groups, uh, new voices, and new recruitment of leaders uh, from, the, uh, from the peripheral areas is very much needed in order to balance uh, the representation of the Israeli people and makes it more near to what uh, uh, Israel and, and the Israeli people really feel and really think and really are. Uh, we're just about to uh, launch now a long-term plan, taking young people and train them and equip them with the right tools that um, might bring them in 10 years' time to some uh, key... Uh, uh, places and key uh, jobs as far as shaping the nature of the the nature and the spirit in their communities and uh, all over the all over the state of Israel. On November 3rd, this young group came from all over Israel to the Golan Heights to participate in the New Horizons program to work on understanding a little about Israel and to develop their leadership skills. This program directs us down two paths: first, on a general leadership path then also for leadership in Torah, because really, without Torah, there is no leadership that can really do anything. While in the Golan, the group learned about how important the Golan Heights really is for Israel's security. Effie Eitzam, having grown up on the Canaret beaches while under fire, was able to relate firsthand about how the Syrians constantly use the Golan to attack Israel. From right here was the far end of Israel's border, from here began Syria. Syria controlled the entire beach until Ginnasar, by where the white sand is over there, and it was controlled by Syria. The Golan Heights continues there to the south. The Syrians used to open fire on the vehicle that brought us to Ein Geb from the moment we turned off the road from Tsema. They fired on our car. All my life, when I was a child, I grew up in this place. We were in the palm of the Syrians' hands, and they always shot right into the community. Effie Aitam explained what happened there, and I really felt what the Golan gives to the nation of Israel, to the land of Israel, and that it would really be difficult without it. The New Horizons program is backed by philanthropists from all over the world and has noted members on its board such as Nobel laureate Professor Robert Ellman. The students participating in the program all hope that one day they'll be able to make a difference. My goal is after I leave Yeshiva with God's help I'll return to my hometown where I'll be able to have an influence. I live in Carmiel, which is basically a secular city. From growing up here, I saw that there wasn't a large amount of Torah-related things. To give to all the programs of the youth, like B'nai Akiva, to do so with a Torah point of view, and to participate in this activity for the sake of the nation of Israel. Okay, that's all for today. We'll end as we promised with a song by the Moshev Band. Join us again next time. Until then, from all of us here at INN TV, Arut Sheva. Shalom.
אני עמוק בשיר שלך, בתוך יומי. אדם יצא אל עצמו נשבר, חופשי ומאושר, לה 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 Thank you. 